Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Carol's desk. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Candy is awesome. Hi, Kathy. Hi, N Bass Realtor. I forgot your real name. I need to remember it. Um, dang it. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Missy. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Dill Pickle. Hi, Kim. I am doing okay. Um, how are you? I have a couple things that I'm going to bring up uh, today, <clears throat> which is one of the reasons why I wanted to come on. And another reason is just because um, it's Friday night. And so it's you know, no work tomorrow. Kids are in bed. Um, it's just a nice time to come on. Sorry, I know it's uh, 9.30 by the time I got on, but the kids took a while to go to sleep. So we did not do the 9 o'clock. Uh, Chantel, this is new. That is new. That's why you have not noticed it. Hi, Marta. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Tina. Hi, Maria from Sweden. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Brittany. The Grateful Baker. Hey. Tracy Seven. Trace, hi. Joyce, hi. Brandy, hi. Kathleen Ryan, hi. Emma, hi. Hi, 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 hi. Um, Nicole, thank you for saying that. Um, I'm just actively trying to um, eat a little bit better. Um, I think one thing that I've realized about not having a spouse anymore, a spouse, you know, always keeps you in check um, with everything, right? Like, <laughs> I, you know, any little thing and your spouse will keep you in check. That's what we do for each other. And I don't have that anymore. I don't have anybody to say, you know what, let's do healthy meals for the next week or let's, let's eat a little better or... I noticed you're snacking a little bit too much. Jenny always had a really kind way of <laughs> kind of saying, slow down, my man. She was always so sweet about it, though. Um, but I have been trying to actively just um, eat a little bit better than I was right after um, the loss of Jen. So thank you. Nothing like ice water. Stacy, how's the rock garden coming? Do you still have space for more? We have so much space. Anybody who wants to send more, send it. I am expanding on both sides. Um, and if I have to move some to the backyard, I will. Uh, we are just, I'm gladly taking any rocks, anything you want to send. So, um, and then whenever you guys are done sending, be done. Um, but it, it does um, warm our hearts. It makes us so happy. So, Anything you want to send. Wendy, I'm sorry you're grieving as well. Um, I, I, yeah, I know how hard it is. I'm sorry. Christina, when are you planning your next camping adventure? Good stinking question. Um, not this weekend. Not the following weekend because I have a wedding. Um, that I will share with you guys that I'm going to be just in, not in, but like, it's one of my closest friends. Um, so I'm a little nervous about the wedding. You know, this is the first wedding that I've gone to alone. 
um, not with my wife. Um, so I'm pretty nervous about that day. Um, but I know it'll be okay. I know Jenny will be there in spirit. But uh, the following weekend, we're going somewhere. And then the weekend after that is our first camping adventure since the last one. And I forget where we're going. I have to look it up. But um, be nice if you're going to play. Um, but it's coming up. We're excited. We want to get back out there. The kids ask me all the time. Um, Ed, an ordinary person, one, two, three, eight. What's your favorite healthy snack? Edamame. Um, and I'm going to try a recipe um, that I just saw today. Um for like a sweet and spicy chili edamame sauce. That's going to be just for me. The kids don't want that, but um, yeah, I love those. Um, I also love just like cantaloupe, watermelon, just like cracking those open and just eating those. Um, those are always good. Dill Pickle, your dog just came running. Um, yeah, I'm always whistling at my little lovely dogs here. Um, Babs, we decided to not go and get the new puppy. <laughs> no. Um, I'm good with my two. I've got a lot to handle with Huckle. Um, plus, I want to be able to like take the dogs camping, and I feel like with a new puppy, there's going to be that learning curve again as Huckle knocks down my charger. Um Hey, not in your mouth. No, thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate you finding that huckle. Um, so, yeah, no, not going to do it. You guys saw, thank you for um, sending the P.O. Box stuff. Um, so thoughtful, so kind. You guys saw in the last video, if you haven't seen it, um, truly so kind. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up tonight was the possibility of a new venture, um, something that I want to try. Um, and the opportunity kind of has presented itself. So I wanted to see what your guys' take was. Um, I was thinking of, on top of the YouTube channel, um, doing a podcast, um, you know, and it can deal with, you know, relationships. It can deal with grief. It can deal with loss. It could be um, cancer, you know, whatever it is. Um, I was just trying to get your guys's take on like, totally, I would listen. Um, I would be on board for that or not interested, bro. We're, we're, we're not. So let me know in the comments, just with a quick, like, yay or nay. I'll take a little like vote. Um, Okay, so far we got a lot of yeses. I appreciate that, guys. I just, I'm a big podcast person. Um, it seems like maybe some of you are. And sometimes you just want to listen. Um, obviously, I enjoy watching uh, YouTube as well. But I sometimes just listen to um, podcasts in the car. And I was like, what if? And um, I have another person who's interested in doing the podcast um, as well. So it's just something that is on my mind and I wanted to see what you guys thought. So I appreciate your honesty. All right. Most of you here are like down with it. Um, so unless anything drastic, uh, changes, um, we might just go for it. Vicky, I totally agree. I don't want to spread myself too thin. I think this would honestly be a really fun thing for me. And yes, there's going to be time that has to be dedicated to it. So I get that part. 
but because I'm so interested in it and I'm excited, I don't feel like, and I could be naive, but I don't feel like it's adding to my plate that much. We'll see, but thank you. Um, I completely agree. Um, I think I'm just looking for more ways to positively go out into the world and do things. Um, and, and, and continue to heal. Um, Tori, I'm not sure if it would be on YouTube as well. I know that you can do that. Um, like you can take your podcast and then also put it on YouTube. I'd have to find out. Um, I will find out whenever those details come to be. It may for a while just be on that platform. Like I keep that platform separate from this one. And then eventually maybe they blend. Um, but I will let you know. I'm still learning. Uh, Cynthia, I feel like I do have enough on my plate. <laughs> I do. But one thing that's helping me in my grieving process is to just talk about it more. And I feel like this would be a, just another outlet to talk about it more. Um, the more I keep inside about grief, the more it eats you up. So I feel like just another avenue to um, just another avenue to let it out and to connect with more people. There's so many people grieving that I'm learning. Obviously, you know, we all lose someone in our life, um, whether it's a spouse, brother, friend, child, um, doesn't matter. Just grief is everywhere. And so I feel like it's such an important topic. But not only that, it would also cover other things just interesting things and mind things and, you know, um, just different stuff. Brittany is not down with the podcast. All right. That's what fair point taken. Um, P Hernandez, you're a great storyteller as was Jenny countless people out there that would benefit. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Flower. Um, no, thank you. Flowers licking the couch. That's another thing too, Hannah. Um, it could also just be like teacher tips or like things I've learned working in special education. Um, some of you saw my post that I posted the other day. There was no hidden meaning behind it. I just heard the audio and I wanted to, it made me think of when me as a special ed teacher, when I'm giving the IEP paperwork to a teacher who's not in the special ed field, sometimes they kind of look at it like just another piece of paper. And I was just kind of like, I don't think some of the teachers realize how important an IEP is, how legally binding it is, how much it benefits the student when it's used properly. And so I went on this little tangent in my head and I was like, I'm going to post this. Um, and I got a lot of positive um, reviews on that. And then I showed a couple people at my work who are obviously in the same field as me and they liked it too. So um, yeah, but the, it's like could also talk about teaching things in the podcast, personality things, um, life things, you know, it, I don't know. Flower, no thank you. Oh no. No thank you, sweetie. Sherry, if I lost my loved one, there's no way I would be this okay this soon. What's your secret? Um, I mean, the secret is, is I'm not that okay. Um, to be honest, you know, YouTube only shows a certain amount of my life. Um, there are a lot of in-between moments, um, a lot of tears, um, a lot of sadness, a lot of emptiness. Um, I'm pretty stinking lonely to be honest. Um, so although maybe the YouTube is showing one thing, I mean, YouTube is like, it's a pretty low percentage of what my actual days are, if, if you think about it. So I appreciate you saying that, but I would be honest. I, I would be lying if I didn't say I'm, I'm still really struggling. 
Um, I miss my wife every day. My kids miss their mom. You know, both of my kids had a breakdown yesterday. Um, I think I told some of you in the video after the picture broke in our house, um, Ellis broke down, you know, there's no, nothing prepares you for, you know, talking to your eight year old about his mom is no longer here. I mean, it's hard. Um, so I appreciate you saying that, but I also think I, I hesitate to say that I'm doing that well. I also am big on embracing the good when it's here and embracing the bad when it's here. Um, this is also an idea for a podcast, but I think it's very important for someone who's grieving and just someone in, in life to recognize the good moments and, and step forward in those moments and embrace them. And then when you feel a bad moment, a hurtful moment, whatever, step back and embrace that too. And some days you're going to have both feet forward in the positive. And some days you're going to be way back in the negative. But you can't lie and always pretend you're in the positive and you cannot stay in the negative. You can't. You cannot let yourself. And I know it's easier said than done, but um, that's kind of my motto uh, is to try to have as many days with two feet out in front as possible and you're going to get knocked back. Um, and I get knocked back often. So um, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, but I also... I, I, I hesitate to say that I'm doing that that well. Um, but thank you. Sarah, your daughter is in special ed and the children are blessed to have you as a teacher. Well, thank you. Um, I feel the same way to have, you know, I tell the parents all the time, I feel blessed to have their their children in my life. Same way. I feel just just as blessed. Deanne, love your shirt. Oh, thanks. Ellis picked this one out for me. It's a Pokemon. If you don't know, uh, my son is currently obsessed with Pokemon. And we were out and he said, oh, it only it was only in adult sizes. They didn't have his. And he was like, oh, can I have that shirt? And I was like, it's a, it's a dad size shirt, dude. And he was like, well, can you get it? So uh, I'm wearing a Pokemon shirt. Okay, Sherry. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, I'm sorry to hear about your son. Um, I also want to say this, and I'm really sorry for what you just shared, but I also want to say that, um, first off, your son's amazing, because um, I know what that's like. Um, your son and yourself included, we're a lot stronger than we think as humans. When we're put into these situations where we have no choice, um, we kind of just we just do it, and you're gonna do it, and your son's gonna do it, whatever that means. So, as scary as it is, and as hard as hard as it is, you know the grieving process starts early when someone gets a terminal cancer diagnosis. Um, so I've been grieving for a very long time. Even when you get a, a cancer diagnosis and you're okay. It's still a grieving process because your old naive life of not having cancer is gone. It's been wiped out. And so we start grieving. I've been grieving now for, let's see, Jenny was, I've been grieving for almost four years now, if you count everything, right? Because she was diagnosed, she was coming up on her, or maybe three years total. Anyway, it's been a long time of grief. And so I'm, Every stage is different, you know, losing your spouse, breaking it to your kids, first events without them, um, everything's a step. And so, yeah, but I'm sorry for what you're going through. I know exactly where you're at. <laughs> Callan Lee, I was watching the video from yesterday. And noticed that Ellis walks like Jenny. Both of my kids do it. Um, Jenny had a very specific walk. I mentioned in my speech at her service, um, and I've also said it, I think I, yeah, I say it all the time. Um, and I meant it more than just a, like attracted to her way. Jenny had a walk, like a certain walk, and I absolutely loved it. Um, and yes, I've noticed it in both of my children, more so Ellis. 
Um, flower, flower, I think the couch is clean. She is just licking the couch. Do you, anybody know what that's about? I am still wearing my ring off beat mellow D. Still going to wear my ring. Um, that one is a very personal thing, right? I don't know. Yeah, it just feels right to wear it. And it will probably feel that way for a very long time. Um, Julie, Jenny would be so proud of how well you're taking care of the children. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, we have we all have our days, my kids and I, and some days are not great. But overall, like I said in two videos ago, I've noticed a, a more happier Ellis and Winnie. Um, I really have. They're doing so great. I'm so proud of them. Lisa, thank you for saying that I'm a great person. I really appreciate that. Um, Jan AF, do the podcast. Do whatever you want to do to help you get through the day. Thank you, Jan AF. You don't know how meaningful something like that is. Sometimes I just need to hear from people like, do what you need to do. Um, and that's the advice I've given to people that I know that are grieving. Um that I'm meeting along this journey is do what you need to do. As long as it's not something that's going to hinder you or your, your family, you know what I mean? There's things obviously that we could turn to in grief that aren't good and aren't productive, but as long as it's helping you cope and it's something that's healthy, do it, whatever it is. Tori, thank you. Um, this is hard work. Um, parenting is hard enough, right? And then parenting with a spouse is hard. Um, and doing it alone is just, yeah, it's hard. Uh, somebody said Flower has anxiety. I think she does. Um, ever since Jenny passed, she's had certain things that would point towards anxiety. Um, she still struggles. She still wants to cuddle with dad all the time. Um, she can't really cuddle over here. Um, maybe next time I'll do it on the couch so she can cuddle. Um, uh, yeah. DG, you have so much to share that would help others and it would help you in the process. I agree. I really do agree. And I thank you for saying that. Um, because anytime I talk or I film a video or I do a live or I meet people, um, it it makes me realize that part, I think part of my calling in life is to help others. I think that was Jenny's calling. Um, and I think we kind of did it together without realizing it. Um, Nicole Silva, then. <laughs> You had to buy a new couch because of your dogs. Oh, no. I was actually looking into a new couch. Um, we don't need one, but this this couch was picked by um, Jenny. And when she picked it, she liked this white one. And that was before we had a puppy. Now, Huckle brings, like, sticks, and he gets his muddy paws all over it. Like, it's, I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, I put a blanket over it often, but... <coughs> Sorry, he is just wrecking it. So I don't know how long it's going to last. And Jenny did say a funny comment, kind of morbid, but, you know, towards the end, we both, we had dark humor because we had to. But she said, well, I'm not going to have to deal with the stain, so good luck. And she laughed. So now every time there's a stain on the couch, I just laugh because I could picture her looking down like, ain't my problem. That's on you, buddy. Um, so it's funny. Gail Rollings, your grief is still so raw. It is. Don't be too hard on yourself. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's so freaking raw still, right? I forget how raw it is because it really does feel like it's been a long time without her. And it's only been five months. Um, so, yeah. Melissa, do you or did you ever struggle with all the compliments? Um, 
So that's a good question. It's a loaded question. It's a two-parter. Um, I used to really struggle with compliments. Um, but both my wife and my therapist have said that you need to take them. You got to just take them. And thank you for them and keep going. Um, so the more we deny things that we are good at and things we are doing well, you know, we need to believe ourselves too. And we need to accept compliments. I think, I think our society struggles with a person who accepts compliments and a person who's maybe like a boaster or a gloater or someone who's full of themselves. And I think there's a big difference um, between just accepting others' compliments towards you. And it's something I've learned to do because of what my wife told me and because of what, what my therapist has told me to just accept it. When someone's giving you something, um, a compliment or whatever, take it and say, thank you. And can you return a compliment back? Um, so that's something I try to do. Marcelli, do you take donations on chat? I don't know how to do that. I do not. Bethany, how do you feel that your students know so much about your personal life? That's a good question. You know, they know a good amount because of YouTube. It's out there. Um, but, you know, more and more teachers have tons of different social media pages that they do with teaching hacks and things like that. And I think, you know, I'm a human being and my wife died of cancer and I'm 34 and I'm a widower and I have two babies that, you know, and we've, my wife started this thing and I want to continue it. And, you know, my, it's, it's something that brings us joy and makes us happy and I'm okay with it. Tina Bop, I'm inspired by you so much. I lost my mom to cancer. I'm sorry. Um, grief is always there. You're doing phenomenal. Jenny's watching. Yeah, grief is always there. That's been my little motto this week is that um, it just, like I've said, it sneaks up. It hangs out with you. It doesn't care how hard you work. It doesn't care all the activities you do. It doesn't care how many times you do something, how many times you cook, how many times you go to Disneyland, how many times, how much effort you put into work, how many things you buy. Grief is just going to wait and just hang out with you until you accept it. Embracing wellness. Do you deal with any guilt, even if it's not even true? I think we all do as humans, right? Um, I don't know what guilt maybe you're specifically referring to. If you could elaborate, I could probably answer a little bit better for you, but I always have guilt, parent guilt all the time. Um, every night, every time I go to a, like a Bible study group and I don't have my kids, I feel guilty. Um, when I see my friends once in a while, I feel guilty. A parent guilt is real. Um, if you're talking about guilt with the whole cancer journey, not, not one ounce. Um, uh, Jenny and I, talked about everything, discussed everything. We both did everything out of the utmost love for each other um, and continue to do that. So I don't have any guilt in that avenue. Um, but yeah, if you want to explain a little deeper, I can maybe give you a better answer. Joyce, go to bed. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining, Joyce. Um, go to sleep, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Oh, you know what the second thing I was going to bring up is I was talking to a friend of mine, and we were getting... Um, just asking each other like these questions, you know, some of them were like grieving questions. Some of them were just life questions. And one of the questions that I asked this person was, who's your go-to when you're feeling, when you have the best news ever and you want to share it with someone, who, who is that person that you go to? Um, and then I said, 
if you get the worst news ever, you're just feeling so down. Who's that person that you that you think to go to in your phone right away? And then after I asked that question, I had a little like uh, cry to myself because I don't have that person anymore. My my number one was Jen. I went to her for everything. Um, good news, bad news, sad news, funny news, old news, new news. Always to Jen for everything, whether it was a text or a phone call. I don't have that anymore. Um, so it really broke me that question. And I realized that right now, today, it's myself. You know, when I have to make a hard decision or do something that's difficult, I got to check myself. And then I still still talk to Jen and ask her for her opinion. It's a hard question. Um, but if you guys wanted to answer that in the comments, it would be wonderful to hear. I always ask people who their go-to person is in a time of need, in a time of happiness and joy. Um, some of us, it's your, it's your spouse. Some of us, it's your mom. Some of us, it's your whoever. Who's that person for you? But... I thought it was an interesting question. Nicole, are you sleeping better lately? I am. Yeah. Debbie, do your coworkers watch your channel? They do. Do they support what you're doing? They do. I haven't met anybody that does not support what we're doing. I've met a couple like, um, I hate to use the word, but like trolls on the internet who do not approve. <laughs> but when it comes to like the people that have been here and commenting and you guys and my coworkers and my family and my friends, I haven't met a single person that doesn't approve of what we're doing here. So yeah, it's usually pretty positive reviews. Oh, somebody said their dad, Sarah, that's cute. Please set up a super chat. I don't know what that means, Marcelli. Terry, you think Jenny would be thrilled with the idea of a podcast? I think so, too. I don't mean to point, but I absolutely agree with you. I think you're right, and I agree. Andrew, are you in therapy? Yes, once a week. Um, I go to individual therapy once a week, um, and then I have my uh, Bible study group that's also once a week. So, which is not therapy, but it you know it heals the soul. Uh, but yeah, I see my therapist once a week. Ray and Maris, are your kids asleep? They are. Any dreams of Jenny? Yes. I was going to share this, but I don't know if it's appropriate, but it's whatever. Um, Jenny finally popped in my dream, I want to say about a week ago. And I woke up in a sweat, short of breath, couldn't breathe uh, in the middle of the night. So the dream was um, she was perfectly healthy. There was no cancer that wasn't even mentioned. We were just a regular old... Um, we were a regular old couple, not old. I just mean like we, there was no cancer. Um, and she started to, in my dream, go out often at night um, and not come home. And uh, one of the nights I confronted her and I was like, hey, where, like, where are you going at night? <laughs> and um, she admitted to me that she was seeing someone else. <laughs> And she just said it so plain, no, like, nothing. And I was just like, what? Like, we could work this out. Da -da -da. And she's like, no. Um, and then I just, I woke up in this, like, sweat. And, like, I couldn't breathe. And I was like, what does this mean? What was that? 
Um, and you know, sometimes dreams don't mean anything. It's just a dream, but I talked to my therapist about it. Um, and I think I'm partly feeling a little guilt for like going to my Bible study group once a week and like doing things without the kids. Um, I think in my subconscious, I'm feeling guilty. Um, and that's kind of when I was talking to my therapist back and forth, it's kind of what we came up with that this dream was kind of like of coming to fruition of me feeling guilty in my life right now for when I'm not with the kids 24 um, seven, which I can't feel guilty about that. You know, I, ha I can, I can be dad, Kyle, I can be work, Kyle. But like I said in an earlier video, I also need to be Kyle, Kyle, like I need my adult time and I don't have that anymore. I'm, I'm here alone. So, um, I don't know. I think it was guilt coming out of my dream, but we never ever had any issues uh, in our marriage. So it was really weird. Um, I don't know, but it was nice to see her <laughs> even though she was like not interested in me in the dream. So weird, um, but it was really nice to see her in my dream. Yeah. Didn't make sense. And it's not Jenny. You're right. Like literally didn't make sense, but Marissa, we did make it to the trampoline park. If you go on my Instagram, if you guys are not on my Instagram, you can look it up. Um, I'm private, so I can just add you if you request. Um, you'll see the trampoline park that we went to. It's a pretty cool little place. It's right down the street, um, and it's always super quiet, and um, the kids were so happy at this little. And then we went to, um, we went to dinner and then came home. Yeah, Rachel Ryder, that was not Jenny at all. I don't know what. <laughs> uh, NBAS Realtor, hi. Um, it's good to see you as always. Um, can you share how you found the right therapist? I would love a good therapy, but I don't want to keep trying. Yeah, it's a tough one, honestly. I wish I could recommend, um, depending on who your insurance is, um, depending on who your insurance is, you kind of have to, oof. my thing was I had one and he was super nice, but I felt personally that he wasn't challenging me enough. It was nothing personal. So I just asked if we could stop. And then I randomly searched on the, I have Kaiser and I searched on the Kaiser website and I found someone you can search like keywords and I searched grief and um, she came up and she has been a Lip and godsend. So I got lucky. Um, Jenny, up until she passed, could not find someone that she clicked with. She never did. Um, people either treated her like, these are Jenny's words, not mine. Uh, people either treated her like a pity party, you know, like, oh, you're, you're dying and you have cancer and you have two little babies. I, I'm just, woe is me. And she didn't want that. You guys know Jenny. And then some people were like afraid of Jen, like, Oh, you're dying. I can't talk to you. Um, so she couldn't, she couldn't find anyone. So I would just not give up. Um, sometimes it takes trial and error, which is really awkward, but um, don't give up because I found someone so great. Sarah Strange, how long you be in therapy? It's a great question. I haven't thought of that. Um, my therapist and I just kind of look at each other every session and say, next week. Um, and I just keep going. There, I'm sure there should be a point where I start to back off a little. But as of right now, um, I need it. So. Wendy, do not feel guilty. Thank you. Jean, you're doing a good job. Well, thank you. VB, Jenny and Ashley had such a beautiful and close relationship. How is she doing? Ashley's doing okay. I don't want to speak for her, um, but we, we see them often. Um, you know, I think I see 
Ashley and her family. I see her every day because of school drop off and pickups, but um, actually like sit down with them maybe two, three times a week. Um, they're, you know, my biggest blessing. They help with everything. Kimberly, give yourself a pat on the back, Kyle. All right. Jenny is an angel on your shoulder each and every day. I agree. I agree. Albus Snape. Do you ever feel anger? Can your therapist process that part of grief with you? Um, yes. Yes. Um, ever since Jenny was diagnosed, I have this little kind of angry part of me that comes out sometimes, and I don't like it. Um. And I've learned through my reading and through different people talking about grief that sometimes grief really shows its face as anger. And um, I don't like the feeling of being angry. Um, I would say in the last couple of months, it's very light as opposed to where it was right when she passed. I was pretty angry for a little bit. Um, and not angry at God, not angry at a particular person, just kind of angry at the world. Um, so yes, anger is a thing, and it's it's definitely a thing in grief. Tina, I do have a new tattoo. Yeah, thank you for noticing. Sherry, your person is your sister. That's cute. I see. I don't have a sister or a brother. I do have a half brother that um, I'm trying to connect with, but. Um, Saw Sanga Dylan, do you miss playing college football every day? Um, I truly loved it. I was just talking to somebody about friends that I made in college playing football and that I'm not close with a lot of them anymore. Um, we all like follow each other on social media and a lot of them watch my YouTube, uh, but or Jenny and I's YouTube, excuse me. And um, so it's cute uh, to be able to like catch up and stuff and see their kids grow up. They see my kids grow up, but we don't like go hang out or anything. Um, Albus, of course, thanks for asking. I love honest questions, honest answers. You guys can ask I mean, some questions I don't answer out of privacy, um, but for the most part, I'm an open book. Um, but you can usually ask away, and I'll try to answer. Um, and if I don't answer, it's nothing personal. Um, and Bass Realtor, where'd you learn your values? You've made me and many of us realize a lot by your words and attitude. Even things like not talking for someone, haven't thought about that being a thing. <sighs> My values. You know, I had a pretty dang good mom um, who taught me a lot of things. Um, you know, my mom would be the first to say that we had ups and downs, right? That's with every family, but she did an amazing job. And it's weird. I had a moment today when I was at the trampoline park. And I'm going off on a tangent, if you didn't notice. Um, and I'm jumping around with the kids. I'm like short of breath because I'm jumping all around and doing flips and whatever with the kids. And then I realized that I love being the parent that can play with their kids at those types of places. Some people choose not to. Some people can't because of health. And I understand all that. So I'm not trying to talk down on anybody's decisions. I'm just grateful that I get to be that kind of parent. You know, Jenny would have, Jenny was always that parent before she got sick and then she couldn't do it anymore. But anyway, my point is I thought back while I was at this trampoline park, I'm walking around on the trampoline and I'm thinking my mom was always the one getting her hands dirty. You know what I mean? Like she would take me places and she'd be involved because um, it was just me and her. And so she was always, you know, hands on and you know, playing the games with me or running through the playground with me. Like she was always that. So I get a lot of things from her. Um, and then I would say like church, 
my friends. Um, and then honestly, I grew up with Jen. I grew up with Jen. So a lot of the things that I do and say are because of her, like, honestly, <laughs> um, you know, I met her when I was what 16 and a half, almost 17. I was a baby. And then she stayed in my life all the way till I was 34, 33, 34. So that's like half my life. And I grew up with her, you know, I learned things from her and so much from her. Um, so I got to attribute a lot of that to her very easily. My mom and her two amazing women, right? Sangha, what grade do you teach? So I teach uh, the way that my school does it because I'm special education. It's not a specific grade. Um, so it's, it's freshmen all the way to seniors. I teach anybody that's on a high school campus that has a disability that needs assistance. Tori, what a question. Um, I want to share this one because I actually talked to my therapist about this one. Do I think having a single mom helped prepare me for being a single parent? I do. It's pretty crazy how things come back around. But yeah, there's so many instances now where I think of, you know, where my mom had to do this or take off this or you know, the, uh, like take off work and whatever. And I'm, I'm that now, you know, and, um, I do think seeing her as a single mom helped me for a lot of what I'm doing now. I do. Pam said, awesome job, mom. Yeah, she did a great job. Rhonda, thank you. Donna, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you for sharing. Green Olive 78. Do you feel like Jenny was at peace at the end? Um a tough question. Yeah, I do. Um, it's a tough question. Again, I don't want to speak for her, but um, you know, we were really open. I feel like towards the very end, she was she was always okay. You know, she had moments where she hated her diagnosis and hated the situation, but she wasn't afraid to die. Um, she never was. Um, she was afraid to be without her kids and her husband, but she wasn't afraid to die. Um, so I feel like she was at peace. I do hate this for her, though. I really do. Blooming raw. I love how open you are. Well, thank you. That's, I, that's all I can do, right? It's just be open. Kyle, Kale, what was Jenny's favorite flower? Jenny loved little itty bitty flowers. So like little like baby's breath, little um da, 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 da. what are the um what are the little tiny little white flowers with the yellow on the inside? I have them tattooed on me. You think I'd know what they're called? Um is it a daisy? Not a daisy. Gosh, I don't know what it's called. Oh, chamomile flowers. They're like little chamomile flowers. She loved the little bitty flowers. She liked roses too, but um, yeah. Daisies, honeysuckle, yeah. 
There you go. CXM305, has Huckle eaten anything else crazy? Um, he just eats everything, man. Um, I have to constantly pick up things off the ground. It's teaching us to pick up after ourselves, you know, because if we leave it on the ground, it's it's getting trashed. Don Walker, Jenny's favorite Disney character, Cinderella. Boom, done. She was always Cinderella. Um, Kim, how is Ellis doing in baseball? Amazing. Uh, we have a game tomorrow. Um, and he is so loving it. Podcast should be Peggy Sue. Podcast should be called Life with Kyle and Guess. Love it. Free flying. Are you getting enough rest? Probably not. No, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I try. I'm doing a lot better than I was, but. Junebug72, do your kids ever ask to watch a mommy video? All the time. And we do. Um, we have it on the TV often. We play Jenny videos. Uh, Heavy B, how are Ellis's piano lessons? They're doing so well. I was going to upload. I have a clip of him playing um, that Ashley took because um, she takes him to piano. Um, and he's doing such a great job. So good. Julia, next camping trip is in three weekends from now. Three weekends. Yeah, Brittany, I'm not trying to speak for my wife. Um, you know, someone just asked a personal question about the end, and it's it's hard to answer when your spouse is dying, but... Um, you know, to the best of my ability, we took care of her and that's all we can do. Maria, um, it is not too late to send rocks, please. Um, I was just saying that, um, we will, I'm expanding the garden and if I have to turn it into like a front and a back thing, like, let's do it. You guys send whatever you want to send. I know it would make um, I know it would make Winnie so happy. What Jenny so happy? Not making any sense. It's late. Um, makes Winnie happy though too. She puts all the all the rocks out. <clears throat> Junebug72, are you more familiar with how to use the camper? No, I'm absolutely terrified to pull it out of its spot again, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I have to. My kids want to do it so bad. Good night, Diane. Maddie boy, you're pretty appalled by some of the questions. Yeah, I just try to ignore them. You know, most people in here have really good hearts and good intentions and it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm pretty used to it, but thank you. April, how's Winnie doing? Does she have girl time with Ashley? She does. Um, and her teacher really takes care of her. Um, there's also another mom that is in our life too, that takes care of her too. Um, she's, she's, she's got some girl time. After your life becoming cancer so intensely for years, not long after Jenny passed, you said you missed cancer. Obviously not liking it, but it was just done. How has that been too with your grieving? Um, will you rephrase that, NBAS Realtor? Like, I think I know what you're saying, but I don't want to answer it incorrectly. Thank you, Coco. T 
Tara, your nephew got accepted to a graduate program in UCLA. Is California vegan friendly? Yes. Um, I go to UCLA often, not for school, I wish. Um, but we, uh, the kids and I go to like basketball games and football games at UCLA. Uh, there's tons of vegan food out there. Um, so they will be just fine. Erica, any advice for scan anxiety? I think I said this last time that I want to make this a shirt, but meditate, medicate, and there was a third one. Meditate, medicate, communicate. So meditate if you can, whatever that means to you. If that's praying, if that's actually meditating, if it's listening to calm, peaceful music, um, communicate whoever your person is, if it's yourself, if it's God, if it's your partner, Communicate to them your fears. Let them know what you're feeling. Get it out. Don't keep it. Don't hold it in. Uh, and medicate if you do. Now, medication doesn't have to be actual medication you take. Um, Jenny did. But if if or if you do or if you don't take medication, it could be whatever your medication is. Um, but the biggest thing was that we did, Jenny and I, is we said, what's our biggest fear? You know, our biggest fear of this scan is that it's going to show A, B, and C. Okay, we just said it out loud. So if it's anything like that, then, you know, we just kind of said, what's the worst thing that we could see in this scan? And we go from there. And there's always a plan. Whatever the plan is, there's always a plan. So try to keep that in your head. Um, but scan anxiety is real. You know, I personally, I've, I have secondhand scan anxiety, if that makes sense. I never experienced it for myself. So I, again, I hate to speak for Jen, but this is all the stuff that she shared with me and that I firsthand saw. Um, yeah, if somebody's being not nice in the comments, guys, it's okay. Like I can't control it. I'm not technical. I don't know how to do that really. Try to ignore it, but I appreciate you guys being protective and kind. Um, I just, I just, I just don't look at it. I just scroll by it. You know, there's only so much we can do. 99.9% um, .9 of all of you are so nice. So just don't worry about them. You had to, oh, here we go. End Bass Realtor. You had to learn so much terminology thinking ahead the processes, the details, then it was over. You missed cancer. So I was assuming it was part of the finality of her loss. Yeah. And it's part of something where I've wondered if I want to get back into, you know, I had a, um, a neighbor um, and I won't give too many details, but they were recently diagnosed and it was like, I instantly jumped into protective Kyle mode like I did with Jen. And I told that person, I was like, okay, slow down. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, first you got to do this. First, we're going to do this, this, and this. Don't worry. It's okay. We have time, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, you're really good at this. And I was like, well, I have a lot of experience. So part of me wants to be somewhat involved in being an advocate for cancer patients. I don't know what that looks like or what that would be, but I feel like there's a lot of people who get diagnosed that are alone or they don't have someone like Jenny and I had. So I, I wish I could be that for people. I don't know. Don't worry, be happy. You could volunteer at an organization that does hospice. Yeah, maybe down the line. I feel like right now it's a little, still a little too soon, but I, I, I like where your mind's at, something like that. Shalana, you have such a compassionate heart. Well, thank you. Heavy B, have you thought about going back to school and becoming a palliative care nurse? I have. <laughs> I was on a big kick of it uh, like a month or two after Jenny passed. Like I want to go to school and be a nurse. Um, I was always back and forth between a nurse and a teacher towards the end of my college career. And then... You know, when Jenny was sick and we were going to the hospital all the time and we met so many stinking nice nurses and I realized how much of an impact they have on someone's well-being and psyche while they're going through this. 
was like, dude, I want to be a nurse. Um, but you know, that would take me more away from the kids than I am now. I don't think it's the appropriate time or place, but it's a good thought. It's definitely something that I would consider though. Alba Snape, I agree. The 99%, 99.9% of the people on this channel and people that have ever commented are, are so dang kind. Um, yeah, I'm overwhelmed always with the kindness on this channel. And for the 0.1% that are not, that's life, right? We're not, you're not going to ever make everybody happy. And if you try to, you're going to drive yourself crazy. So yeah, that's all we can do. Love animals most. That's a really kind comment. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. I think so too. Um, I don't know if that's ever going to come to realization, but um, it was a fun thought. And I, you know, sometimes wish I could do that. You came to set us free. I am just trying to read. We are almost wrapping it up. We had a good turnout, guys. Um, <laughs> Missy, you've noticed that Jenny and I make a lot of the same facial movements. We do. Um, we were, you know, we were together a heck of a lot. So, um, I have a big theory about that though. I feel like couples find someone that like, <laughs> is like totally in their same realm wavelength type of thing. I don't know. It's like a thing. Good night, Rhonda. 7 a.m. in the UK, what? is going on what is that time difference i figured out how to remove a not so nice comment so thank you guys for helping me yeah i'm glad you got to come on uh, guys, um, well, I think that might be it for me. Um, oh no, Pam said, don't do nursing. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I mean, all power to you. You're an amazing, you're a saint. Um, it is a lot of time away from the family and the schedules, to, you know, not as favorable as it is right now as a teacher. So but thank you for sharing and thank you for what you do. You're amazing. Yeah, the puppies are going crazy. You hear that? They're going crazy. Night. Good 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 night, guys. Good night. Oh, Miss BC, Miss the Fashion Shows. I keep forgetting. Uh, I got to do that. I got to do that. Maybe I'll do one in the morning before Ellis' baseball game. Diane, that's such a good example. I'm going to take a screenshot. A patient navigator at COH. What a good idea. Yes, yes, that's what I'm thinking. All right, people are sending in questions right now, and I'm about to go. <laughs> Angie, uh, if Ellis would have wanted to eat that donut yesterday at school, would you have let him? And would I be okay with it? Yes. 
So I've told both kids that if they're ever at school and there's a party or there's something and everybody's eating a cookie or a donut and you, you know it's probably not vegan and you want it, eat it. Like, just eat it. Daddy's not going to be mad. Mommy is never going to be upset. Uh, we tell them all the time. Um, and they they don't. Um, Winnie has before. <laughs> Winnie's come home and said, I had M&M's because I wanted them. Good for you, girl. Nobody was upset at her. Um, so, yes, I would have. But he did not. And so I, I made a deal with him. And I said, since you didn't get to enjoy the donuts like everybody else, let's go get donuts. So, but he's actually absolutely welcome to. Uh, both my kids are. It's, you know, it's their life. Obviously, what I'm cooking in this house is vegan. Um, nothing's being forced, but it's what I cook. But if they're out at someone's house, I've told them, like, they both have made choices um, that are not vegan and when I, when they're not with me. And that's okay. It's, 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 that's life. I want them to be their own person. All right, good job with the questions right before we left. Those are great. Um, no, yeah, you can ask that question, Glitzy Gem. Uh, it's not offensive to me. I just don't have time to get back to a lot of the comments, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, you know, those moments happen... Um, and I tell the kids, if you want it and you feel okay, do it. Don't second guess it. Just live your life. Um, so, yeah. It's, there go my dogs. I know. Now I want a donut. All right. Honestly, I truly appreciate all of you. I love all of you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for sticking with us. Um, watch our videos if you're interested. If you're not, don't watch them. <laughs> and um, if you have any suggestions for videos, let me know in the comments in here. I'm always looking for new stuff besides, you know, just the stuff that comes out naturally. Um, you know, if you're looking for, you know, people suggested cooking. So I've been doing cooking the last couple of times. But if you... Um, if you think of anything, let me know. I love suggestions, um, but I appreciate all of you. Bye, guys.